Chairman, I would like to introduce Dr. Wilson Tsai. Hello, I'm uh, Dr. Wilson Tsai, the Principal of Investment Analytic Research, and I thank the Board for give me, giving me an opportunity to ask a question. My interest as an investor is risk management, particularly in relation to derivatives, which the famous investor Warren Buffett called in 2003, financial weapons of mass destruction. Sure enough, derivatives play an essential part in the global financial crisis. Instead of reducing derivatives, since the GFC in 2009, Australian banks led by NAB actually tripled the risk exposure to derivatives to nearly $40 trillion. For the audience not familiar with derivatives, it is the notion, notional value or face value of the derivatives, not its market value, which determines risk. If you bought a million, if you bought a million dollar house with a hundred thousand dollar deposit, your exposure to the property market is not a hundred thousand dollars. It is a million dollars. In the now I refer to the financial statement and reports. In the NAB 2019 Annual Financial Report, Note 9, on trading instruments, there it disclosed the mark-to-market values of derivatives, assets, and liabilities. However, these numbers do not convey the information on the off-balance sheet risk on the bank. I have, to I have to research back to 2015 Annual Financial Report, report in Note 11, to discover that the notional value of derivatives was then $2.6 trillion, with a T, not a B. That is, each dollar of assets or liability led to $50 of exposure to market risk, a 50 to 1 gearing. Now, without knowing the notional value of derivatives in 2019, it is impossible to know the current NAB off balance sheet leverage and therefore the risk exposure to derivatives. So my question is, does the chairman of the audit and risk committee, which I assume is uh, Mr. David Armstrong now, know offhand the notional value of NAB derivatives? And importantly, why is the critical information not provided since 2015? Thank you. <clears throat> I'll give uh both the Chair of the Audit Committee and our Chief Financial Officer time to think the question through, but I would take issue with uh, one comment you made. Um, the use of derivatives in National Australia Bank is overwhelmingly dominated by interest rate derivatives, uh, which are denominated in the same currency. So if for the benefit of the audience, that might be a, a swap between a floating rate instrument and a fixed rate instrument, both of which would be denominated in Australian dollars, for example, or indeed both in US dollars. To say that the exposure is the gross amount of US dollars is simply incorrect. The exposure is the difference between the floating rate and the fixed rate. So I, I do think that uh, while it might be helpful to see what the notional value is, I think itself could be also quite misleading for uh, interest rate derivatives in the same currency. But perhaps if I can ask, um, I stand to be corrected, but uh, my recollection was that uh, when uh, international financial reporting standards came in, there was this concept of including the, uh, the notional value of derivatives. And over time, there was a recognition that that was actually quite a misleading number, uh, to some extent, for the reasons you've described, because it doesn't deal to what was the underlying risk that was being hedged. It doesn't deal to the collateral that may have been obtained against the market risk associated with the derivatives. And at the end of the day, uh, I, I believe that the accounting standards were changed to eliminate that risk, and I stand to be corrected on that. We, we think about the derivatives in the context of the purpose for which they're being used, the counterparties with whom we are trading those derivatives, and the collateral that is held against those derivatives for the potential market movements. And that's how that risk is managed. Thank you.